Well, hello, scrappers. Welcome back to my channel, Mike here. And um, in a previous video, which I'll put a link to in the upper right, I mentioned that I have a new, simple, easy, inexpensive method of making stannous chloride solution for testing for precious metals. I said in that video, if people are interested in how I do it, I'll do a quick video on how I make it. Well, okay, almost immediately the requests for the video started coming in once they, they saw that video. So I'll show you how I make stannous chloride solution these days. It is really quick, simple, easy, inexpensive, all that good stuff. Now when I first started using stannous chloride solution, I was all worried about purity. And I would buy, you know, three or four nines fine tin and I would dissolve it in, in muriatic acid and I would use that. Well, that's all out the window. You don't need that kind of purity just for a stannous chloride test. And you can get tin a lot cheaper if you're not worried about purity, okay? So, what I've been using lately is just lead-free tin solder for making my stannous chloride solution. And you can get this in just about any plumbing supply store. You can get it online. Uh, the important part is it has to say lead-free, like this one does right there. Let's see if I can get you a close-up on it. Lead-free. So that means it's almost entirely tin, okay? But it's not 100% tin, okay? If you read the fine print, you'll see that this contains a little bit of copper and selenium and probably other brands of solder that the formula is probably a little bit different but it's not going to be 100 percent pure tin uh, now those other metals are in there in very small quantities but uh, they are in there so this is not pure tin but it doesn't really matter since we're only going to use this as a testing solution it's not going to contaminate our gold solution since we're only using it to test and we're not putting this stuff into the gold solution so you know, I got over my uh, my desire to use pure reagents for stannous chloride solution. It's just not necessary, and you can get by with this stuff a lot cheaper. Okay. So, and, and this there's a lot there's a lot of solder here. You can make a lot of stannous chloride solution with one roll of plumbing solder. Okay. I mean, this is going to last me a lot of years. I mean, I'm barely into it. So. I'll show you the recipe. Uh, I admit, a lot of times I just eyeball it. I keep my stannous chloride solution in this uh, bottle right here. And um, I know from experience that about this much is about 50 milliliters, okay? So um, I put about this much in and I put in the amount of solder I want and I let it dissolve and hey, I've got stannous chloride solution. But we'll do an exact recipe for those of you who want an exact recipe on how I make this stuff. So let me get my scale out and a beaker and we'll make some and we'll see how it goes. All right, let's make some stannous chloride solution. So I have found that the amount of solder you use really isn't super critical, but somebody always wants to know just how much to use. You know, it's 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 not like cooking where a pinch of this and a tad of that works. It's Everybody wants to know an exact amount. So I cut my solder up into about quarter inch lengths, about six millimeters for those of you in the metric world. Again, this isn't super critical. And we're going to go with an amount somewhere between two and two and a half grams. We'll aim for two and a quarter, okay? We go a little over, a little under, it's not going to kill us, all right? Whoops. Retrieve that piece and that'll probably do it right there. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's a little on the high side, but we'll go with that, all right? So I'm going to put this in a little beaker. All right, and next we need some muriatic acid. We put about 50 milliliters of muriatic acid in here. Right about there. All right, so now we just need the uh, now we just need to wait for the solder to dissolve, and that would happen on its own given enough time. But it's kind of a chilly morning, 
So we're going to give this a little bit of warmth. Now I'm going to put this in the fume hood and put it on very, very, very low heat. All right. Um, the hot, hot plate's going to barely be on. You don't want to boil it, and you don't want to even heat it up too much. But a little bit of warmth will speed up the reaction. I mean, the stuff is bubbling pretty good in there as it is. I don't know if that's showing up on the video or not. And it will dissolve on its own in the ambient temperatures here. But adding a little warmth will help. That will speed things up. Especially if you're in a hurry, you need your stannous chloride solution in a hurry. Okay? But like I said, don't boil it. And don't overheat it. Now, one disadvantage of using this solder with this is we're going to have some sediment left over in here. The copper and the selenium in this are not going to go into solution. So there's going to be some dark sediment in here. That dark sediment used to bug the crap out of me. And I used to filter it out. But eventually I came to the realization, hey, it doesn't matter for a stannous chloride test. That sediment's not bothering anything. The sediment's not going into my gold. You know, so I don't worry about it. I just don't worry about getting the sediment out. I just don't worry about it. It's not a problem. Uh, so just so you're aware, it's going to be there. Now, over time, that sediment does tend to slowly dissolve into the stannous chloride solution. And over time, there'll be less and less sediment in the bottom of the bottle. But about the time the sediment's almost gone, this stuff's no good anymore. So you start, you throw it out, and you start over again. Okay? So let me get this in the fume hood. And uh, we'll get it warmed up very slightly. So here we are. It's in the fume hood. Um, this hot plate really isn't even on. It's just still warm from something I did earlier today. And um, as the liquid in here warms up a little bit, the, the ferocity of the reaction as the metal dissolves gets uh, more and more vigorous. So uh, we'll just let that sit there and dissolve. And that should be dissolved pretty darn quickly um, with the warmer hydrochloric acid than the room temperature, which, well, it's, it's a chilly morning, so it's, it's, it would take quite a while. All right, so we'll just let that go, and we'll look at what we got later. All right, this stuff's been sitting here for a few hours. The metal's all dissolved. There's that dark sediment I was talking about that forms, but I'm not going to worry about that. This stuff works just fine with that sediment. I just ignore it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean out my uh, stannous chloride bottle, get rid of the old liquid that's been in there for a few weeks now, and I will decant this into it, and we'll give it a test and see how well it works. Now for storage options, I like to put my stannous chloride in a sealed bottle with a ground glass stopper to keep air and moisture out, and that will keep the stuff, that will make the stuff last longer than if it's just exposed to the air, okay? Um, this will degrade over time. Now one disadvantage of using the solder rather than the pure tin I find is that this stuff goes bad quicker. All right, And you get in danger of having a false negative if you use it. So one clue though is if it starts turning yellow or worse yet green you know it's no good. Just throw it out and make some fresh. And this is so quick and easy to make that after only a week or two, I usually make some fresh anyway. And just don't take the chance of using the older stuff. And um, I like to just uh, take the ground glass bottle, put it in a spare beaker, put the dedicated uh, pipette in with the beaker, and then I've got, you know, I've got my stannous chloride stuff ready to go on a moment's notice. I don't have to... Uh, fish around for a pipette or anything. It's all right here, ready to go. All right, so let's see how well this concoction works. I've got um, some aqua regis solution here. It may or may not contain gold. Let's have a check and see. Put a couple of drops on here. That's actually more than is necessary. Now I get a lot of crap about using the white spoon method. Uh, with my stannous chloride tests instead of like just dipping a piece of filter paper in. You can do it however you want to do it, but there is method to my madness. And the reason I use the white spoon method is because I think it's much more sensitive to low levels of gold or platinum group metals than, the stent, than using a piece of filter paper. Because you're looking through the thickness of a, of a drop here. 
and you know that that thin film on the on the filter paper you might not see a very faint signal that you've got some precious metals there but when you're looking through some actual thickness of a millimeter or two of a drop well that signals a lot stronger especially against the pure white background of the spoon you can see whether you've got you know precious metals in there in incredibly low amounts I got a feeling the amount we've got here isn't so low though so let me get a little bit of my stannous chloride solution put it on there and boom look at that yeah we had a really strong signal for gold yeah I'm cleaning up a little bit of gold I dropped out of a really dirty solution by redissolving it in a little splash of aqua regia and I'll filter it and re-precipitate it and it'll come out a lot cleaner I do that a lot if you watch my videos but yeah the, uh, the stannous chloride solution I make this way using the solder works great. And it's a lot cheaper and a lot easier than a lot of other methods for making stannous chloride that I've seen. It doesn't require pure reagents. You know, it's just, it's just a no-brainer. This is the easy way to go. All right. Well, I hope you found this video a little bit interesting, educational, informative, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future gold and silver recovery videos. There will be more. Check out my second channel, Electro Geek 64 If you're at all interested in electronics or retro computing, you will probably find something there to interest you. Alright, I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.